Hello and thank you for joining me on my program tonight. I've got a message that I want to talk to you about and it's going to be like a, an instruction tonight, a reminder type of instruction. You know, sometimes we just need to be reminded about certain things in, in the Word. And sometimes we also need to realize that Satan is still very much active. And when things are going smooth and so forth, we may forget that he hasn't forgot about us. Now, God has always got us on his mind, but so does Satan. So I want to talk to you tonight about don't listen to them. There are times whenever something is spoken to us, uh, a discouraging word, and we begin to let it settle in until it begins to come all the way up here. And it's just kind of going back and forth in our spirit and in our mind. And before long, we've lost the victory. And we have not got what we know God has got for our lives. And we wonder why. Well, it's because we've been listening to the wrong people. And so I've decided to bring with, you, with us tonight a message, don't listen to them, from 2 Kings chapter 18. We're going to be talking about King Hezekiah. Now, King Hezekiah loved the Lord. In fact, we're going to read here in a minute where he served the Lord more than anyone around. Any of the other previous kings, King Hezekiah stayed with the Lord. Let's begin reading in 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 4 through 7. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the New King James Version. Verse 4. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. You see, the king of Assyria was out gathering land, gathering nations. He was busy picking up everybody else's nation and bringing it under his name. But King Hezekiah said, uh-uh, I'm not going there with you. So... That other king of Assyria, his name was King Sennacherib. Let's begin in verse 28 here. Then the Rabbishak. Now, Rabbishak was like King Sennacherib's um, voice. He went on behalf of the king. He stood and he cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language. Hear the word of the great king of Assyria. Thus says the king... Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. You know, when I read that, I can just, I can sense an evilness about it. Let me show you why. There's a, when Satan is in the mix of things, there's always some telltale signs. Listen to it again. He says, listen to me, don't listen to them. Well, that doesn't sound bad if you know what both sides are saying. You see, King Hezekiah, the people of his, of his kingdom, of his nation, they knew King Hezekiah served God Almighty. So if you know that you have a, a Christian leader or a, that you yourself are a Christian and somebody else comes up and says, don't listen to that Christian. You come follow me. That's exactly what King uh, Sennacherib was trying to get across. When you hear that, run, flee from it. Satan is in the root of it. Next, 
if they quote a portion of a scripture, but they leave God out, get out of there. Satan's in the root. Verse 30, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in and rely on the Lord, saying the Lord will surely deliver us and this city will not be given into to, to the hand of a serious king. Have you ever had anybody tease you about going to church or tease you about wasting your time reading that Bible of yours, um, praying like you do? People will just begin to taunt you and tease you. I, I know I've had it, and I suspect many that are listening tonight, you've had it maybe outwardly and maybe not so outward, but maybe by their look are the answer they give. You know that they're thinking you're wasting your time going to that church over there that believes in Jesus. Some of them will get bold and they'll say stuff like, you know, you just need to grow up. You just need to quit following that group over there. You're young. You need to live a little while you're still young. Um, don't go to that church and sing those songs. Quit wasting your time reading the Bible. Come follow us. We'll show you a good time. You, you're missing way too much. Folks, that is the purest words of Satan. If you can't ever, if you're wondering what does Satan sound like, the minute someone tells you to quit reading your Bible, quit trusting in God, quit declaring that God will see you through, that's Satan. You want to know what he sounds like? That's it. So Satan doesn't come up with any new lines. He hadn't got a new line in him. He's been the same old liar from day one since Adam and Eve. Let's look, verse 31. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me and eat every man from his own vine and fig tree and drank every man the waters of his own cistern. Look, all you have to do is just come after, come with me and then you can do what you want to do. You can have your own land, your own life, drink what you want and do what you want. You don't have to be accountable to anybody. I got land for you and you can just be your own man. Wow. Verse 32, until I come and take you away to a land like your own, a land of grain and vintage fruit, of bread and vineyards, of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. Do not listen to Hezekiah when he urges you saying, the Lord will deliver us. Now the devil once again gives himself away. He plays trickery and deceit. The big clues, as I said, is the minute somebody says, don't listen to that word, that word that comes out of that Christian's mouth. Don't listen. For oh, be careful, folks. And then did you notice Satan is always such a copycat? He only offers what we already have in God. He said, get this. I will take you away to a land like your own, what God has already given you. A land of grain and vintage fruit, of bread and vineyards, of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. God has already given them that. The lie that Satan told was, you will die when you go over there. God has given us a land that we may live and not die and it is filled with all the blessings of the Lord. But there's always somebody that just whispers in your ear, quit paying them any attention. You don't need to do that. Just give up over there and you come with us and you can have a great time. You can just do what you want to do. Well, that was Sennacherib's lie to the people. Do not listen to Hezekiah when he urges you saying, the Lord will deliver us. Understand this, if it's from God, you will never hear 
turn your back on God. That doesn't even make sense, does it? Let me repeat this. If this person's conversation to you is from God, from God, this person's conversation will never include the line, turn your back on God. But you have to listen, folks, because sometimes it's not that obvious, but if you really just sit down and ask the Lord to show you, you will see a, a pulling away, a drawing away in their conversation. The root comes from Satan. There's going to be a separation from God somewhere in that. Serve me, not God. You'll see it. You'll hear it. You'll feel it. Verse 33, has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered this land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of, and he mentions several gods here. I'm not even going to try to mess with pronouncing. Verse 35, who of all the gods of the countries has delivered his country out of my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. Now, first off, I want you to understand that the, the, um, the gods of these other nations, they were made out of rock. They were made out of stone. They were idols. They were not, they were not the spirit of the living God. Hezekiah knew that. Sennacherib did too, by the way. He said, look, all these other nations with their gods, I defeated them all. None of them could defend, were defensive against me. I could just go in and take them, knock those pieces of wood over. He said, I burned them all. You see, you don't burn the spirit of God. There's another big clue. But if he's saying, I have taken these other nations and their gods, well, fine, it was a piece of wood. God will not put up with that kind of bullying, so let's watch. Okay, verse 36, but the people were silent and answered him not a word. For Hezekiah had commanded, do not answer him. I want to use this piece right now as a teachable moment. When you hear this kind of stuff going on in your ear, be quiet, be quiet. Just like Hezekiah told his own people, it was sound advice. You go before the Father. You see, we're going to read in a second where that message was carried straight to Hezekiah, and then we'll see what Hezekiah did. But you... Just relax for a moment. Don't jump when, when it begins to sound kind of good, but, but there's something wrong. You, you, you hear it. When you're a follower of Christ, he will build inside of you what I call red flags. He will build inside of your spirit a, don't go there. Don't listen to that. You don't need that. I've got you. You'll hear it. Take it as advice today. Be quiet. Don't answer. Don't get it. Don't jump in. You go back and pray about it first. Let God minister to you first. Verse 37. Then Eliakim, son of Helica, who was over the royal household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, son of Ashpheth, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes rent and told him what the... Rabbi Shack had said. Now let's go to the Amplified Version, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. When King Hezekiah heard it, he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. See, that's what I just said. When you hear this, the first thing you want to do is get into the house of the Lord. Now the Lord is in the temple of you. You are the temple of the Lord begin to just go inward to begin with. Go inward in prayer. He went to the house of the Lord. Verse 2, And he sent Elikim, who was over his household, Shebna the scribe, and the other older priest, covered with sackcloth, 
to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, next thing that Hezekiah did was he sent for the prophet, the man of God, Isaiah. Sometimes we need godly counsel. It's okay to seek godly counsel. In the Old Testament, Isaiah was the voice from God, and so he was seeking the answer from God. Verse 3, And they said to him, Hezekiah says, This is a day of extreme danger and distress, of rebuke, of chastisement, and blasphemous, insolent insult. For children have come to birth, and there is no strength to bring them forth. Children have come to birth, and there's no strength to bring them forth. Folks, there's many times when we are in such a condition that we feel literally bound. And at that moment, we know we must have intervention. God knows how to intervene. If this is a comparison of a woman in, that's travailing in labor. She's worn out and she cannot bring this baby to birth. There must be intervention. God tells us through this story that he is the one that knows how to intervene. When children are coming to birth, children, for children have come to birth and there is no strength to bring them forth. God said he would be our strength. Verse 4, It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of Rabbishak, whom the king of Assyria has sent to mock reproach, insult, and defy the living God, and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. So raise your prayer for the remnant of his people that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Verse 6, this is the way Isaiah answers. Isaiah said to them, Say to your master, Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid because of the words you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled and, and blasphemed me. See, God was hearing it all. Verse 7, Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own country. Now God answers King Hezekiah, through the prophet Isaiah, and he tells him not to worry. In fact, he says, I'm, I'm going to put a, a rumor in his spirit, one that will kind of keep him tied up, and he will not win. In fact, he won't live. Verse 8, So the Rabbishak returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Lebna, a, fortifi a fortified city of Judah. For he had heard, get that, that the king had left Lachish. And Sennacherib, king of Assyria, heard concerning Tarkaka, king of Ethiopia, he has come to make war against you. And when he heard it, he sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Say this to king Hezekiah of Judah, Let not your God on whom you rely deceive you by saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Now, as I, if I could look into the audience tonight, into the homes, wherever th this is playing, I would ask you, do you believe in the word of God? Do you believe in it? Every word, do you believe it? Well, I'm pointing out um, deceits and lies from Satan tonight. That's part of my goal, is to show you what he sounds like. You see, he said, Say to the king Hezekiah, Let not your God on whom you rely, don't we rely on this word, our God? He says, don't rely on that. Jerusalem shall not be delivered by the, king, by the hand of the king of Assyria. He says, you know what? 
I don't care what you've heard from God, it's not going to happen. That's the way Satan talks. Now, in the New Testament, it says that Satan's a liar. Well, if he's a liar and he says it's not going to happen, then uh, it is going to happen. Just saying. Verse 11. Behold, you have heard what the Assyrian kings have done to all the other lands. Right. They defeated wood and rock, other gods. Didn't God just say that he is going to take care of the king? In the couple of verses that we read before that, he said, I, I will take care of him. I'll put rumors in there and you will win and he will die. And then he turns right around King Sennacherib and he sends Rabbishak back to Hezekiah and taunts him some more. But God, you just told me that you were going to take care of him. Has that ever happened to you? Has it ever happened to you? Have you ever felt like God said he was in control and that he would do it. And then here it comes again. And you're going, but God, you said you would do it. What he said he would do, he will do. This king coming back, Sennacherib, he was taunting, but it's words only. You see, God has a time for everything. God's schedule is not the same as man's schedule. And we want to put God on our schedule. What we have to do, if you really want to see victory, is to begin to allow your life and situation to be put upon God's shoulders on His timeline. Now, God loves you. There is never a thing that's happened to your life that God wasn't present and always willing to intervene when you called. He's an on-time God. There are situations that we think, well, he could have stepped in right then. God knows what he's doing because he looks at an entire picture. Remember, he said, I got this. I will handle this. Verse 14, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it another taunting letter from the uh, Sennacherib and he went up into the house of the Lord. What does he do? He goes right back to the house of the Lord again and he spread it before the Lord. He lays it out on the altar. Here's his threatening letter and he's like, here Lord, you see this? Once again, where did he take this? To the house of the Lord. He did not take it to his best friend. He didn't take it to the counselors. He took it to God. The best friend and the counselor couldn't do a thing. He took it to the one that had already said, he's got this. Verse 15, And Hezekiah prayed, O Lord, the God of Israel, who in symbol is enthroned above the cherubim of the ark in the temple, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you had made the heavens and the earth. Lord, bow down your ear and hear, Lord. Open your eyes and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock, reproach, insult, and defy the living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste the nations of their lands and have cast the gods of these people into the fire for they were not gods, but they were the work of men's hands, wood and stone, and they could not destroy, and they've destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech you, save us out of this hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know and understand that you, O Lord, are God alone. I want to stop right here because this is where the Holy Spirit is telling me, stop. If you're in a situation tonight that has been eating at you, taunting you to give up, maybe it's sickness. Give up. God's not going to heal you. Maybe it's a lack of a job. Give up. God's not going to give you that job. I don't care what it is, a broken marriage. 
I don't care what it is. God wants me to reread verse 19 because this needs to be your prayer. Make this your prayer tonight. Now there, and it sounds formal, but maybe sometimes that's the best way. Now, therefore, O Lord, my God, I beseech you, I come to you. Who are you going to? I go to God. Save us out of his hand, and his hand is Satan. Whatever it is that he's trying to place upon you that you know is wrong and that you don't want it, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know and understand that you, O Lord, are God alone. Now, I'm going to take the word kingdoms because he said kingdoms of the earth. There's kingdoms, there's nations, there's families that come under a, like a kingdom. O Lord, meet my need tonight. Here it is. I lay it on the altar before you. And if you have to write the letter as you've heard it, lay it on the altar. I lay it on the altar before you, Lord. Would you read it, Lord? Would you see what's going on? And now, Lord, I beseech you, save us, save me out of this situation. Why? So that my family, my co-workers, my doctors, my whoever my circle, my kingdom is, may know and understand that I serve the living God. I serve the God not made of rock, not made of stone. I refuse to listen to them. I serve the living God tonight. If that is you, because this is not the finish of my message, but it is tonight because this is, is the verse for you tonight. You must begin to write it down, lay it on the altar and beseech it. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, my God, I beseech you, I come to you, save me out of this mess that all my family my job, my co-workers, my friends may know and understand that I serve the living God. Come with me next week. Let's continue to study about the living God. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed Kingdom Ministries with Reverend Dee Levins. For more from Dee, read The Long, Long Night, The Story of Destiny and Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her books at dlevins.com. Send an email to dlevinstv at gmail.com or text Dee at 254-681-6099.